Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Conspiracy Farm, where we don't start the conspiracies, we just add the water. And now, your host of the most state-of-the-art, most informed podcast on the interweb, I present to you, Pat Militage and Jeffrey Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for war? Okie dokie. Well, it's a lock and loady for another episode then here on the Conspiracy Farm. I have no idea what number this is, but we are definitely chugging away. I am, as always, your co-host, Mr. Jeffrey Wilson, along with my partner in crime and fellow co-host, Mr. Patrick J. Militant, UFC Hall of Famer. What's up, buddy? Uh, lots up. I mean, uh, on the Conspiracy Farm, our tagline is, we don't start the conspiracies, we just add the water. And I have a feeling we're going to be watering with a uh, fire hose tonight. Yeah, we we have we have so much on our plate, and we also have a very special guest as we are adding new sponsors to the program. We have e, the proprietor, the president of the C4 Clothing Company. If you want to go check it out, go to the C4.com. The proprietor and owner, Miss Pamela Johnson, is joining us from the program tonight. Hello, Pamela. Hello, it's wonderful to be here. Well, we thank you for taking the time for not only coming on the show but lending your wares to our little. Uh, our little humble program here on the Conspiracy Farm. Thank you so much for getting some pretty cool feedback. So where did that come from, man? I looked and I saw, I mean, obviously we know each other pretty well, but you had this company coming out, and I was very, very impressed with it. What was the uh, what was the impetus for this, the C4, apparel for concealed carry folks? Well, um, I've been in product development um, for apparel for a long time, and it's just really difficult uh, for women in particular to wear a lot of the holsters that are offered now. Um, Like in the waistband, holsters never worked for me. I purse carried for a long time, and I don't really think that that's probably the safest way to do it. So um, I developed a line that specializes in firearm holster clothing for men and women, which is basically base layers with attached holsters. And we utilize patent-pending uh, magnetic retention technology to keep the gun as close to your body as possible. And all the garments that we carry, um, they have holsters inside them. And like I said, they're usually base layers that you wear underneath, like your normal attire. They're for men and women. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I, you know, I started out with women, of course, because it was easier to design for myself. And then I noticed that men, you know, they need some more options as well. So... That's sort of where it started. Well, it's very cool. And again, if you want to check it out, the magnetic retention is actually genius. Thank you. Yeah, you know, um, it's it's a lot easier. It it actually allows for single-handed draw, too, so it's more comfortable. It it holds the firearm close to your body, and it's just, you know, I use a lot of um, new synthetic fabrics as well, which are great. I mean, there's a lot of, like... um, wicking fabrics that are working really well for us so i try to use my yeah the best that technology can offer at this point that's great because i wear a lot of wicking clothing because i run long distance and you know that stuff's definitely very comfortable number one but two you know with the magnetic retention that you have um you know i've only noticed that in certain places like under the dash of a vehicle things like that that works really well but it really is that's a cool idea for the body Oh, thank you. Yeah, a lot of our stuff um, actually can be worn during workouts as well. Um, like I said, it's a lot of it is base layer, so you could, you know, you could wear it by yourself if you're into, you know, open carrying, or if you're hiking or something like that. It works really well. Also, if you want to just like throw it over underneath, um, like office clothing too, that works out. Right now, how do you feel about open as opposed to conceal? I mean, I've always been a guy that. I would much rather be able to sneak up on somebody and have them not know that I have it. Um, and I'm sure that women would be a little bit nervous potentially um, having the weapon uh, being out there in the open just simply because you never know if somebody's going to come up behind you and, and try and take it from you and, and overpower you, right? Yeah, of course. You know, I'm I'm all for everyone who wants to open carry. I think that's great. For me personally, I think that it makes people uh, very nervous. A lot of people aren't educated on the law or – they just don't know anything about firearms in general. So when they see someone with a gun openly, they tend to get sort of nervous. And, you know, I don't I don't really want to bring extra attention to myself, so I prefer to conceal carry. However, 
I live in Missouri. Currently, if you have a CCW, you can open carry. As far as I know, I think it's January 1st. You don't have to have um, a concealed carry permit at all to open carry at that point, um, which, I mean, I'll be interested to see how many people will do that. But I think it will be it will bring a lot of possibly undue attention to people who do want to open carry. So they need to be you need to be aware of yourself. You need to be pretty much extra aware of yourself, I think, at all times because there'll be people who react probably very poorly if they see someone open carrying, regardless if it's legal or not. Right, right. Okay. Well, and it's so crazy here in St. Louis, as you said, Pam, if it's a it's an open carry or a concealed carry state and about to be open carry and like you said, it's a very um, good thought process to <clears throat> not necessarily want to bring attention to yourself because, I mean, it's crimes everywhere. But you know, I was, we live in St. Louis, and it's it's crazy here. We've had just up the street, a cop got ambushed and shot in the face in like broad daylight in the middle of the afternoon, and that's even happened you know more than more than enough times around here. So it's like you just never know who's around you. You know, you got to be definitely if you're open carrying, definitely very aware of your surroundings. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I totally agree. And like I said, I don't dissuade people from open carrying. You just really need to be aware of where you are and um, other people's reactions, I think. You know, I wouldn't want to be in a place that's really crowded where I'm open carrying personally just because I feel like someone might, you know, do something ignorant. (laughs) You never know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the other thing that's cool about what your line is, I mean, it's like you said, you have stuff for men and women, but you have like multiple items for, you know, men and women. It's not like you're kind of just one item. You, you know, talk to us about the multiple um, aspects to your line. You know, you have, like I said, workout gear, stuff that can go under skirts for women, like very utilitarian and very diverse. Yeah, absolutely. Um, with, uh, with men, we don't have as many products right now because, I feel like the the market's sort of crowded with that kind of thing. Um, not that there's not, you know, moves to be made as far as as men go, but women have a lot less options. Um, so for men, we do have um, things that you can definitely wear to the office that will be comfortable for all day wear. And then for women, we do also shorts and leggings, which, you know, if men want, I've, there's been a few men who've emailed and said, you know, do you offer shorts? Obviously, men don't tend to wear leggings. Um, but these sorts of things, women have more, a little bit more options, um, even though it doesn't seem like it, because it, women, it's, it's harder for us to conceal carry under sort of our uniform that we wear. It's a little more diverse than men. Mm-hmm. But it also opens up other opportunities to hide firearms on the body. So that's sort of what we're going for. Um, but, yeah, our products can be used, you know, like I said, during during the work week, on the weekends, during workouts, it works for all those sorts of scenarios. Now, what percentage of, in terms of the clothing, are women ordering? Fifty percent, sixty percent, thirty percent? Good question. Um, it's it's about fifty fifty right now, but I still the firearm, the concealed carry in the firearms market is dominated by men. I mean, women are really getting into it um, at record numbers. I would say at this point, but still, it's. It's sort of uh, men are still dominating, which is great, you know, but I'd say it's about 50-50 at this point. Yeah, so my my partner in my law enforcement military training company, who's an excellent, pretty actually an amazing shooter, we call him a carny because he can do so many things well. He can shoot uh, <laughs> riding a horse and hit the target. He can ride up a quad at 40 miles an hour and hit the target. It's, it's ridiculous how well he shoots. Uh, oh, but, wow. So my wife is from originally from Montreal, Canada, and was completely against weapons when she moved here. Oh, wow. um, was was very freaked out that I had guns, had them in the house, <laughs> things like that. And you can understand, you know, she came from a, a country where yeah. people just generally don't have, they're not allowed to have weapons like that, um, certainly not concealed carry. So uh, I was very foreign to her. And um, Don, my partner, uh, took her out. We went down to the farm down in southern Illinois, and he spent about probably four hours training just her and I just sat on the tailgate of the truck and let him do his work and um, in the beginning she start, started out just basically learning the how to how to operate the the weapon how to check you know be safe with it things like that with a with a unloaded 22 and by the end of the afternoon she was shooting from position she was she was doing active shooting moving through targets shooting uh, moving through the woods tactical stuff and he had her shooting 
I mean, she was shooting the hell out of the, the gun and hitting everything she aimed at uh, by the uh, by the end of the, the four hours. And, and uh, she's uh, she's definitely into the clothes, and she wants to order some, some C4 uh, clothing. Oh, that's awesome. That's great to hear. Yeah, we always, of course, um, it's great to have training as well, you know, and even four hours for, for someone who has never shot a gun before, that's a huge step, you know, and can totally change someone's, you know, view of firearms that they've had for most of their life. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you're afraid of something you don't know anything about, right? So, um, sure. you got educated on it. And yeah, one, one thing I say is, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, especially outside the U.S. for Canadians and other, you know, other countries that just, it's not in their culture. Right. Um, but, uh, no, it's, 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 it's pretty neat, and definitely training is very important, being pr- proficient with it, being safe with it. Um, Absolutely. It's, it's, it's really, really important for people to understand that. But, you know, for all the folks out there that might be listening to this, um, who listen to us for our, for our, our politics and um, discussions on geopolitical stuff that's going on, and who aren't familiar with firearms, I mean, go take go take a lesson and try it out and check it out and check out the C4 uh, clothing because, obviously, if you're going to carry a weapon, you want to be able to carry it comfortably. Well, and that's right, what that's Pam right. spoke about. I mean, that's, I think, a huge, sorry, Pam, that's a huge component when you talked about people open carrying. There's just, there is kind of a, and not to, to be smirch or have a negative connotation, there is an ignorance factor, a lack of information, and a fear factor um, to kind of speak to that, I guess we kind of just did that the education of getting past the education um, to to make these things less so taboo, if you will. Yeah, well, like I said, um, even even a half day of training, you know, like uh, getting your concealed carry license, you know, requires it, you know, at least before the open open co- open carry law was passed. Uh, it was like eight hours, you know, which can really change someone's perspective if they've never shot a firearm before, which is really encouraging why, you know, uh, four hours of tactical training for your wife probably made a huge, you know, huge difference. Right. And yeah. for, yeah, for anyone who's not handled a gun before, you know, just, you can just go up to your local range and talk to someone about it and get a private lesson. That's how I started. I got private lessons or... And then, you know, take a group lesson and, you know, it, it doesn't take long for you. Shooting is really not that difficult. So it's not, it should be an intimidating thing for someone who's never handled a firearm before. But you definitely don't want to go out carrying. And certainly I would say not open carrying without having training. And you can get that training from UFC Hall of Famer Pat Milliton and Don Roberts at Fire Horse Combatives. You can find that at firehorsecombatives.com. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, an unpaid for extra plug there, thank you. Hey, so let's trans. Hey, Jeff, do you think? You know, I think let's transition from this, you know, into a Second Amendment talk a little bit. You know, um, you know, I know that I was very happy that Trump won. Remains to be seen how much he's going to follow through with on on everything that he promised. But the the main reason that I voted, and you and I talked about this, was for the Supreme Court situation. And uh, you know, maybe you could talk to us a little bit, Pamela. On, you know, what kind of different talk we could be having right now had Clinton won knowing what she planned on doing to the Supreme Court, who to put in the liberal judges. And and basically she said it openly that she wanted judges in there that were going to, you know, she said it openly that they got it wrong on the Second Amendment, yeah. that it needed to be reversed, and she wanted judges in there to do that. How scary would it have been um, for the Second Amendment for for constitution-loving Americans had, had Clinton won? I think we really dodged a bullet with her not being elected, honestly, um, largely for the Supreme Court, also for the situation with Russia, which is another topic. But, yeah, this is a big deal as far as Supreme Court justices go, and hopefully Trump will do the right thing and follow through with some of the things he did promise. Um, time will tell with that. But it's certainly a better bet than Clinton would have given us because I think that we know what she was about to bring to the table. Yeah, what are no, your thoughts you're seeing so far? Liberty. Today, he, he – well, I mean, in a 60-minute interview, he's already eased up on the Clinton special prosecutor, and then today he pretty much put a nix on it, saying at least he wasn't going to pursue it. I don't know if that's some chess move that means other people will, i.e. an attorney general. What are your thoughts on some of this uh, pulling back on some of these Cl- – the, you know, the locker up and the immigration? Did he troll everyone? Yeah. Possibly, but I think he's trying to – to the middle now you know he's trying to sort of 
uh, neutralize his opinion somewhat so that he can, you know, I, I get he's trying to ne- unite the country somewhat, and I that's fine, but he really does need to follow through with some of the things he said, especially about Clinton. When he made that comment about putting her in prison, I mean, come on, <laughs> you know, a lot. There's a lot of us who would like to see him pursue that that angle. Well, it's not well, just the emails. I mean, they were talking about pedophilia and the yeah. Lolita Express, and I forget Pat. What are the parties again? I keep forgetting. Well. The spirit let's, parties let's, or whatever? Oh, the the ordering a pizza, pasta, a hot dog. You know, all those are are um, keywords for boy, young boy, girl, young girl. Um, and the cakes, of, the cakes kinds. made with with male ejaculates and stuff. It's there's it, some sick there's some sick bastards. But um, you know, digress. You know, yeah. Moving on from that, I mean, I think <laughs> I'm telling you right now. And people, I told you this. Um, earlier, Jeff, I, I think even a, several days ago, um, and I've been telling people, Trump has a great poker face in my mind. He has no reason to say, yeah, we're going after her. He doesn't want to say that. He doesn't need to say it. Um, they want Obama to get out of office, so there's no chance of a pardon. And then, hey, Sessions and the other guys uh, in the administration at the Department of Justice and, and FBI can then go to work on her. I'm telling you that the FBI, Comey, they, these guys are not smart or not dumb people. Um, he brought up that they were opening an investigation once, closed it down, then opened it back up just in time right before the election, and then shut it back down just enough to do damage to her. Um, and all the, uh, all the other information that we're getting on, you know, what people that are paying attention. It's not, it's not Russia that, that uh, was getting WikiLeaks this information. It was Patriots. On the inside of our intel community, that were that were feeding WikiLeaks with all these these emails because they absolutely did not want that woman to be president and destroy this country even further than Obama has, and I think that they're waiting for Obama to get out of office and then they're going to turn the dogs loose on her and the rest of these people. I mean, there's a reason you haven't seen Huma Abedin. There's a reason you haven't seen Anthony Weiner. There's a reason that Eric Braverman, the the CEO of the Clinton Global Initiative, has been missing since October 12th. I, I'm, That's fascinating. I'm almost, you you brought that dude, up. To I'm me telling you right time. now, these people these people are in protective custody, and they're waiting to pull them out, and and they're they're they are going to lay some people down, buddy. I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, Eric Braverman, the head crazy. of the Clinton Foundation's last tweet was what was the date you said? October twelfth. And has not tweeted since. Like that's that's pretty odd. And trust me, he was tweeting a lot about the election. Yeah, and it happened all he around the same time of these these you know the breaking emails and all this crazy stuff. So it's either okay. Look, it's one of three things with him. I think it's I think he's in protective custody, but it's either protective custody, um, he's in the Russian consulate in New York City, or he's dead. It's one of those three things. Ms. He's Johnson, not, your he's thoughts? Not, he's not a, dude. He's not on vacation somewhere. Trust me. No, 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 no. <laughs> Nobody doesn't tweet for that long. What are your thoughts on this, Ms. Johnson? Well, I was going to say, Eric Prince did an interview, I think, with Breitbart right before the election. He was in Hong Kong, and he said something very similar, that um, New York Police Department was completely fed up with the information that they had gathered from the laptop of Anthony Weiner, and that the same thing, uh, apparently him and his wife had cut some deal with uh, the FBI. Well, and and she think, looked you know, with, with that. The with what the New York City uh, Police Department was saying to Prince and other um, intel folks was, um, if the FBI did not act, the Department of Justice did not act against Clinton, that they were going to have a press conference. Here's what I think happened after the New York cops made that statement, is some of our intel people got in touch with them one way or another, went and met with them in secret and said, listen, this is the deal. Let Obama get out of office, then we're going to go after her. Okay, so just back off, mm. relax, and take your time. That's why that's why New York PD did not come out and do that press conference, and they they weren't putting two and two together on this. And that's that's really the play here in my mind. I mean, um, I can see that. I can before, definitely see that. I, I, I've I've seen into the future several times, Jeff. I'm telling you. Um, I can see it coming hard. If if they don't go after Hillary, I'll be very surprised. But I guarantee um, there's going to be a lot of people um, from the DNC, the Podesta, 
and all these other people that were involved in this stuff that are in deep. Look, I can't just uh, go away. All that DNC Wiener, they, stuff. They, 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 trust me, dude. If they weren't going after Clinton, they would have announced charges against Weiner and Huba Abedin and all these other people long ago, right? The, the investigation's still underway. <laughs> it's still coming, I think. Right, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. They have. They had enough. They had enough info. They had enough info with the statements that the. the uh, New York police officers were making the the heads of the New York Police Department saying, you know, being a father of children, this stuff sickens me. Um, they they could have gone after him, you know, after that. Well, and then would would the article I send you today, Pat, about St. Louis? St. Louis is one of the top whatever cities for human trafficking, and you know, absolutely. And you know, Chicago is also, and you know, these these uh, major hubs. Um, that this stuff's going on, you know, and you, you've been talking about this stuff um, with the elites of the world doing this stuff to kids for a long time, Jeff. Yeah. And, uh, and, and all of a sudden, you know, and, and still, still liberals will not, will not listen. They will not face up to the fact that this stuff is going on with a lot of powerful Democrats and a lot of elites around the world. Yeah, and that's that their own mental illness or whatever, you know, that whole like, oh, politics, it's just kind of politics. Like, no, 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 no. I mean, I understand politics is some dirty shit, but when you start talking about, you know, preying on human beings and children, I mean, we, we're on some next level, uh, not to use Luciferian, but we're, we're talking about some dark Sith Lord type shit, man. Pardon my language in the presence of a lady. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it's not it's a satanic in nature. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's what the emails are saying. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know, we write um, children's stories as well, ladies and gentlemen, just in case you were wondering. Well, <laughs> so we would be remiss. I mean, Pat, do you have any more on the on the current situation, the current status? Did you, you, had, uh, you had mentioned some other stuff about the media and white nationalism, et cetera. Oh, yeah. I mean, um, you know, the stuff that's going on in the news right now. And you can see dude, these guys that I've worked with um, in – in the TV industry, um, you know, African American dudes who are really smart guys, and they're biting onto this white nationalism stuff. They're 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 posting um, information from from the New York Times and all these other just rags, these liberal rags, um, talking about white nationalists and and this big movement. And I sit there and I go, he was running against a white woman. Okay, there, it's okay. I, I don't get it because he wants to get a, get rid of illegal immigrants, especially illegal, illegal immigrant criminals. Um, now he's a racist. Now he's anti-Semitic when he's got um, daughters. He's got you know a, a son-in-law who's Jewish. Is you know uh, you know from Breitbart Bannon, uh, yeah, who's got three daughters married to Jewish guys, and he's got Jewish grandkids, and they're calling him an, an anti-Semite. And it's just all this information. Uh, misinformation on purpose and it's it's so troubling that that they're believing this stuff i just sit there and go guys wake the up man what what is wrong with you i said do you realize how foolish you guys look parroting mainstream media and all these false narratives that they're throwing out there dude it's well, you because they'll, the they'll pull up a, they'll pull up a legitimate video of white nationalists doing the Sieg Heil or whatever we saw the other day and making that seem like that's the entire freaking you know what I mean that's that's a automatic guilty by association. If you if you're down with Trump, then you must be any kind you know a, a white nationalist, which is crazy for right. black folks. But I tell them, I go, dude, you know they sit there and talk about oh all the racism against Obama. Well, sure, there was some racists out there, of course. I mean it's. It goes it goes both ways. I mean, there's there, there's going to be pockets of racism. We know that it's it's just a fact of life. There's dumbasses everywhere, okay? But I sit there and try to explain to them, guys, this was a revolt by the American middle class against the elites, the global elites. You don't understand? I said first we had Brexit. I was going to say it's that an was echo UK, of Brexit. That was UK Brexit was the UK revolt against the globalists, the the bureaucrats in Brussels that were controlling. Um, all of their policies in their nation, their monetary system, they're, they're just sick of it. Trump was Amer the American revolt against these people. Now Sarkozy, um, over in France, takes third place in their primaries. And, dude, he's nowhere to be seen. He drops out of politics altogether. Um, the far-right lady, uh, Le Pen, um, is, is looking to win that. She's, she's 
Donald Trump all the way. She's completely against globalists. So there's your French Revolution there. There's your French and Merkel's saying, and Merkel's now saying she's going to run for a fourth term, which is historical. And I guarantee, you, I'll, I'll, I would be willing to bet my life on it that Merkel gets destroyed over there because Germans are so pissed off, they want her, her out of there. I mean, she's a quizzling traitor. Yeah, and she really failed on the immigration policies, but she's trying. She's actually realizing now. I mean, Germans have just had enough. You're right. This is a two, revolt against globalism. They brought in over two million Syrian refugees. They've got chaos over there. It, yeah. yeah, absolute chaos. And that's the thing, gang. We talk about this, Pat. We talk about it all the time, being a chess game as opposed to checkers. Like, I don't like all the things Trump does or, you know, the nuance of all that shit, but I don't get caught up into that because I'm looking at this larger picture like we're talking about. This is a referendum on what we're talking about the last 20, 30 years of GATT, NAFTA, EU, of African Union. Now we're going for the North American Union soon. It's like... The world has put the brakes on that shit. That's really what it's about. And people have got too caught up in these nuances of, like, you know, black, white, immigration. He called us all rapists. You know. Yeah, it's there. All that, all the distractions by the All media, the horse shit. All the horse shit. Administrations. When right? it's, when it's it, real. When, like, when globalism is real. It's, you know, it's not just happening in the U.S. It's not just happening in Greece or, like you said, France or the U.K. I mean, this, this is a, we're going to see reverberations of it, this for a while. Dude, I actually had a guy on Facebook today, um, a, a former Olympic gold medalist sprinter. Um, he and I were discussing on Facebook back and forth and stuff, and he's, he's a liberal. And it's okay. We get along. We laugh about some stuff. But, um, but a friend of his got on there, and just I, I, I had to say, you, you said this in jest. You had to have said this in jest because you're a complete moron if you didn't. Um, but he said, why don't you read – some mainstream news newspapers and watch some mainstream news to get the correct information because obviously you're misinformed. And I thought, dude, you've got to be kidding me. You are that fucking stupid that you are well, the polls, word for word the for me what these people are teaching. I said, dude, no, listen to this, Jeff. Think about it with common sense, and you've got a lot of it. Why is it all the mainstream newspapers, radio, and 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 TV stations, news stations, news reports, all run the same storyline because it's they're all being fed, they don't have anything unique from each other, dude. They're all being fed the same shit they have to say by the powers above them who from Skynet, them. dude. It's all going freaking Terminator. I was just telling, you know, it's are complete fucking morons, dude. Yeah, and if there was never a more telltale sign, the polls for Hillary Clinton that the mainstream media was showing. I mean, I was watching CNN halfway through when it finally, when it finally became evident that Hillary was going to lose. They started backpedaling. Oh, how could we get our? How could we get this wrong? Yeah. We're all wrong. How, I mean, they were trying to save face before it was even called. I mean, they were embarrassed. They knew they were embarrassed. That's. You know, I mean, that should give them no credibility in anyone's eyes. At this and, point. and it won't. In future elections, we're going to see. You know, their their ratings are already dog shit, but we're going to see. You know, as but much as they the spin on their Harvard educations and all that here, PR. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, Jeff. Here's the thing. Their ratings are in in the tank. But I'm telling you, when you buy when you buy a cable subscription, they all get a part of that money, so it doesn't matter. And that's the bad thing. And you know, I sat there and I thought about it today, and I thought, you know what? To hell with it, man. I'm getting rid of of um, my TV subscription, my my cable TV scri- subscription. I'm going with Hulu or Netflix or whatever the hell hey, I yeah. have to do, because I don't want any of those people getting my money anymore. And I I would encourage um, everybody that listens to this to do the same thing. Just switch over to Hulu, Netflix, whatever it is. Do your research, because. Uh, my my cable subscription is done, dude. It is across it is the done. board, ladies and gentlemen. Vote with your dollars. Absolutely. Yep. And and then we can listen. Then we can uh, go on the internet and get all of our our fake news. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that's pretty much. I don't really watch much like normal terrestrial TV. All my viewing is customized through the internet, like you said, YouTube, Hulu, Netflix. It's very you know all the on the five hundred channels that you have in your thing is a lot of nothing. I go on I go on MSNBC and other stations just to see what kind of garbage they're feeding the, the populace. 
And you, you know, right. it, watching the watching CNN during the this last campaign and toward, definitely toward the final stretch, it was so painful. It was beyond painful. Like everyone jokes, it's the Clinton News Network, but it was just ridiculously painful. And then come to find out, individuals like Donald Brazil were, you know, not only working for CNN but also feeding Hillary Clinton, you know, questions. I mean, it's just. It's a scary thing, man. I mean, it's, it's even more kudos to Donald Trump to have triumphed that that behemoth dude because she had the dough, she had the media, and you know she's she's an insider. But that's all the more that just makes all the more of the statement that much more significant, man. You know the 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 statement that was made with him being voted in the the Brexit type echo, if you will, is it's huge, man. People yeah, ain't yeah. having. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I just want I, I want people to understand that yeah that's that's the way CNN and all these other garbage um, news stations go away is that everybody just cancels their cable subscriptions. There you go. You know, just do away with them. Gone. It's like ESPN, dude. They're the MSNBC of the sports world. I can't watch them. I worked for ESPN, dude. That was on air. I can't watch it. I can't do it. Well, there you go, folks. You heard it. Well, we cannot leave. We cannot leave the show today, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm not sure if everyone's aware of the date. It is November 22nd, 2016. It is approximately, do my math, 53 years, 53 years since the assassination of President John Fitzgerald Kennedy in Dealey Plaza, downtown Dallas. What do you guys think, man? It's been 53 years, and it's, uh, I think, I think mainstream is still towing the old uh, Lee Harvey with the three shots with the old man liquor Carcano line. <laughs> you you've you've researched you've researched this so much um, a little bit to the depth to the depth that you know I can't even fathom to be honest with you I just I nobody's ever truly solved it so when I right. when I would listen to all the documentaries I would read about it I just go nobody's ever really solved this to be honest and we had a guest on who was a CIA scientist was Lee Harvey Oswald's mistress and the stuff that she said blew our minds on this stuff Lee Harvey saying they set me up um, there's nothing I can do to stop this. It's coming, you know. Sending him to Russia to learn to learn Russian, go to school, and then have him come back, set him up. He's a he's a communist now, yeah. you know. That's that's the that's the propaganda, the line that they're going to follow and and frame him for the murder. All makes perfect sense to me. It really does. It all fell into place the way she explained it. it made made perfect sense. But um, you know, 53 years after, it's never going to get solved, dude. Right. Right. I mean, I guess you'll never hear, you know, Brian Williams. I was there November 22nd. You'll never well, hear it he on was. the official news. He was, too. <laughs> Brian Williams was there. He was three. Yeah. You'll never hear it officially. But, I mean, there's a lot of people who've, you know, researchers who I wouldn't say have solved it, but who've definitely given you way more to think about than just Lee Harvey Oswald. Dude, you can't see the 8 millimeter film with Brian Williams in his stroller with his Fisher-Price <laughs> microphone recording it, dude. Come on, bro. <laughs> what are your thoughts, Miss Johnson? What I mean, we're still living in a world where you know I don't know how much you. I mean, I know we've spoken in, in previous times on this. Is we are still we're still seeing these same players. There's reverberations of these people, whatever you want to call them, neocons, Nazi. I mean, they've been called different names, but there's a lot of this apparatus still in place. Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. And, you know, I've, I have the pleasure of being in Dallas this summer. Um, so I stopped by. I don't know if you've ever been. Nope. Um, you can't go to the window in the book depository anymore. Uh, but you don't really need to. Um, I think people who haven't been there may be surprised to know how actually small the area is. For some reason on video, at least to me, it always looked like the area was much more spread out. But if you look at the angle... I mean, they have on the on the concrete on the street. They have marked X's of actually where the where gunshot wound. Yeah, where it landed, and um, you don't even have to be in the window to tell that the angle is just ridiculous. You probably don't even have ever had to have shot a rifle to see. I mean, he would have had been hanging out of that window mm. basically to get the angle of that shot. I mean, it's so silly. I don't think they ever could have pulled off this story if you know for example the internet was around at that time there's no way no god no but you know, people people weren't able i think to see the full picture at the time and they were you know obviously it's a very traumatic situation and the whole the whole story if you're sitting there looking up at it it's like this is absurd this is completely absurd 
the official story, I mean. Well, of course, yeah. So, Jeff, why don't you why don't you tell us what you know when you talk about um, the Germans lost World War II, the Nazis didn't, um, and how all that stuff uh, played out over here, and and the way your belief is with with how it relates to Kennedy's assassination. Well, and we're going to get another gentleman on who to speak a little bit more articulately on this. But yeah, I mean, you had obviously Germany lost the war, but you had. You know, at the time when Germany lost the war, they had several different companies, not only just front companies like IG Farben, but you had several different, almost several hundred different subsidiaries. So when the Nazis lost, those companies went underground, changed their name. A lot of those Nazis went to Argentina. A lot of them came over here via Project Paperclip. The reason we went to the moon was because of Nazi technology via Werner von Braun, who engineered the Saturn V rocket. Um but, I mean, the, these people still kind of put I – mean, there's several layers to it, if you will. You kind of got your underground Nazis. You got your Wall Street. You got, you know, a, a, at least with the JFK, you got your Texas oil businessmen. But um, there's just – there's a lot to it. There's a lot of players involved. I would say if you want to go to one particular individual, I would say to look at a Nazi connection, I would say John J. McCloy. John J. McCloy sat with uh, Adolf Hitler in the booth during the uh, 30, uh, during the Olympics. I think it was the I forget what year in in Munich. Um, he went on to become the head of the World Bank, the head of Chase Manhattan Bank. Ironically enough, was on the Warren Commission. That was the thirty six Olympics, wasn't it? I think it possibly was the thirty six Olympics. So I mean, to encapsulate it all just in a few minutes is 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 a lot. But there are so many different layers of players. Lee Harvey Oswald had no idea exactly how deep he was into it. He was actually an intelligence agent for the United States. Um, kind of playing both CIA and FBI roles on this, you know. But yeah, he was um, he was in deep, man. He was in very deep, and there's a, there's really a lot to this. And if you listen to our first episode, one of our first episodes with Sean Stone, we kind of allude to some of the larger stuff beyond just the financial, almost terrestrial stuff. There's some um, I hate to use the word Illuminati. There's there's some there's there's some magic going on with some of this. There's some there's some Sean Stone's stuff. an intelligent dude, man. Yeah. He's, he uh, he he really is well versed in in a lot of subjects the, a lot of the stuff that's going on and has researched very deeply and michael chavello my broadcast partner who was on our show also absolutely um went out and did sean stone's show and, and michael said that. man that and michael's very intelligent he goes that, that dude's sharp well pam you actually hit me to the gentleman we're going to be having on why don't you uh, speak to your your thoughts on the the kennedy assassination and that that nazi tie and how some of that still reverberates today are you speaking of Joseph Farrell? Well, you let the cat out of the bag, but sure. I was uh, trying to keep it under wraps, but feel free. Go ahead and, uh... <laughs> you should have told me that off air. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, the story is that Martin Borman, uh, apparently, they think possibly may have faked his death in Berlin and actually escaped to Argentina. Uh, but before that, he coordinated uh, with a bunch of um, German industrialists how to, when they knew it, I think it was about somewhere in 1944, towards the end of the year, they sort of knew that things weren't going to work out in their favor. So they were trying to um, get money out of Germany. Of course, there was a ton of stolen loot that they had taken from the rest of Europe. Um, and they, uh, according to British and U.S. intelligence agents, they were able to uncover about 750 um, front corporations that they had set up, these are only the, only the ones that they had actually found um, that this particular group of um, Nazis had set up um, to basically get themselves and their families and their loot out of Germany before the fall. So you can only imagine, um, this was like several hundred million dollars in 1944. So you can only imagine probably what it's worth today. Wow. And the kind of influence that they probably had over the countries that, you know, they were going into, you know, Argentina and other countries that they, they weren't very wealthy. So you can only imagine what this kind of money would do to an economy like that and if you or read, what kind of influence I'm sorry. have. And if you read books like The Rise of the Fourth Reich by Jim Mars, this is pretty much, he articulates this as well, These the, what we call neocons. If you look at your kind of skull and bones, a lot of these guys who graduated from these prestigious colleges went on into certain industries, if you will, sometimes military. Basically, that was the military industrial complex, which, as we know, kind of feeds itself. Politics and corporation is now, you know, what's called fascism, that revolving door. 
um, was was very prevalent at that time. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, it was the fight of communist versus versus fascist. So people, I guess, people felt like they had to choose a side. Well, and you, you think know. about think about George Soros being 13 years old, turning in his fellow <laughs> Jewish citizens to the Nazis, and uh, somehow he right. ends up being being a multi billionaire. Probably, I, I don't, I'm not sure how many billions he's worth. I don't think anybody really knows, but he has enough power where he tanked Britain's. Um, monetary system he devalued their currency just off the way he was buying and selling currencies and he did it on purpose that's that's how much power one guy has and he's tied to that whole nazi co- connection uh, well and Henry he's the guy that's, another one to look he's at the guy, he's the guy that's funding black lives matter and yep. move on dot org they, they say that he has spent upwards of a couple billion dollars trying to derail america's sovereignty Right, and ironically, he's also funding neo Nazis in the Ukraine um, as a to destabilize Russia. So, if someone's funding neo Nazis and Black Lives Matter, I mean, what, do you think he cares about Black Lives? No, you know, he doesn't no. care about any lives. <laughs> I mean, come on. He cares about controlling, controlling, and well, number one, you have to destroy national sovereignty. They've done a great job in Europe. Um, my God, Europe's falling apart. And uh, they're certainly they, they they were so close with with getting Hillary in, um, boy. Well, we, like like you said, we dodged a bullet. As as it relates, you know, zero back around to the original conversation. As it relates to the JFK assassination, ladies and gentlemen, in my humble opinion, per the question you asked, Pat, JFK was a threat to all that we just described. Any to really understand JFK's assassination, you have to understand the possibly thirty to forty years. Of, of geopolitics leading up to his election and all the players involved from Alan Dulles to John Foster Dulles, the secretary of state, your John J. McCloy. Yeah. There's a lot of players involved that when like Bay of Pigs went down and he fired these cats who had been around for 20, 30, 40 years. I mean, it was, it's, it's, it's again, it's chess and he was, right. he, he was exactly. a threat to the chessboard. Now think about Trump. Trump re- represents the exact same thing that JFK did. I was I just as before we came on I saw a video is is Trump the new JFK very interesting. Let's let's hope uh I'm telling you like I said it, I was telling you before the election if he gets elected man he needs to stay in the White House um in armored personnel what? is that he can't get out of that friggin' suburban Trump thing. Tower I think I saw is a million dollars going to be a million dollars a day to protect him in Trump Tower. Yeah. 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 You know, final I, thoughts on the Kennedy assassination before we move on. Can, Pamela, any any final thoughts on on this on this day, which was you know lived quite much more in infamy, just as equally as uh, Pearl Harbor? No, I mean you know I hope that it's been a uh, like you said what has it been fifty three years, I believe. I hope that people will still remember the impact that this had on our country because although JFK, you know he's not he wasn't a perfect man, certainly had some issues, but. What he was trying to do was was so phenomenal, probably, that so many people had to come together to actually take him out. I mean, it's amazing. And the uh, the Kennedy family really hated the Nazis, as far as I know, because his older brother, I believe, was killed in World War II mm. by the Nazis. So, he, you know, his family really had a uh, serious dislike of Nazis. And I think at some point, I mean, 1963, that's less than two decades after the end of World War II, he knew, he understood the infiltration that was going on, um, you know, yeah. of Nazis into the U.S. And not only the U.S., Russia was taking them as well, South America, and even Asia, which a lot of people don't realize. A lot of Nazis got to Asia and, and also to the Middle East. Well, Eisenhower um, made this very clear in his farewell address, addressing the uh, military-industrial complex. People don't really... And it's funny because, yeah. and not to cut you off, Jeff, no, I'll let you ahead. talk right after I say this, but it's funny that... When you mention military industrial complex to anybody, they look at you and think you're a tinfoil hat wearing fool. When it was a president that coined the phrase, <laughs> right? Well, right. And I, Eisenhower may have also not only been speaking of the potential U.S. military industrial complex, but also what he knew was happening in Germany because of what you mentioned earlier about the rise of uh, fascist international, basically it's a bunch of Nazis escaping with a ton of money. Who still have the same mindset that they always had, you know, since before before World War II even started. So Eisenhower, I think he was not only speaking to the U.S., but he was also speaking about what's going on with Germany falling. 
And it, it's hard to understand all this without understanding the different aspects. And the financial aspect is huge. You know, George W. Prescott Bush with, with uh, Union Bank was a huge part, as well as other American and other European assets funding the Nazi war machine. It's crazy because you know, a lot of these global bankers we talk about, Pat, they fund both sides. It's not, you know, it's, they don't particularly yeah. care. It's just all war and it's all money they for them. They want everybody in debt. They want everybody in debt to them. Yeah. And, and you know, take out a take out a good half million people here or there, you know, or, or you know, 500 million people. It's, you know, what's a little cleansing here or there. Yeah, why do why do why do those millions of people deserve to have access to the resources that they want? Well, and we get to test our new weapons too. Hell, we got some new no new new guns to fire off. Yes. Well, Miss Pamela Johnson, anything else you want to throw at our uh, brand new sponsor of the C4, which you can find at the C4 dot com, Mister Mister Militich? You want to holler at? Uh... No, thank you, Pamela, for being on here. I really appreciate it. And... Oh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys for having me. It's been an enjoyable discussion. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm looking forward to trying out the uh, clothing and, and uh, testing it with my weapons and, and giving, giving full feedback, and, and uh, I'm sure it'll be very positive awesome. reviews. Awesome. I am excited to hear your feedback. Thank you so much for having me on. Is there any other social media stuff you want to throw out there, or is it just, just the website pretty much? Uh, well, yeah, our website, the C4.com. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest, and you can get all those links on the website. So I hope you will check it out. What's your What's your Twitter address? Uh, it's the C4X. At C4X. On Twitter. Yeah. At C4X. Right. All right, awesome. That's easy enough to remember. I've been hit a lot in the head, so I need simple stuff. <laughs> Well, again, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on, Pam. This has been another episode of the Conspiracy Farm with myself and Mr. Pat Militich and uh, one of our new sponsors, president of the C4.com, the Concealed Carry Clothing Company. Go check it out, folks. Yeah, we are back, man. That was cool, man. Sharp tack there. Pamela Johnson, the proprietor of the C4.com, having a, a little bit of a deep discussion on some geopolitics as well as her clothing line. Pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, bright lady. And uh, obviously, uh, I'm excited to, to test out the clothing, man. Yeah, I'll be anxious to check that review, man. I'll be anxious to check that out. I just want to have my wife throw just just the like the really skimpy stuff on and run around the house. They're hot, man. They are hot. If you go check it <laughs> out, man, I, they are hot. There's no doubt about it. Well, what else have we a, got, man? You want we can do a little? Oh, yeah. So, um, look, man, we've got you know tomorrow and then Thanksgiving Thursday. Which I know is always a lot fun. of people. I don't know how many people you know, Jeff, but I know a lot of people. Um, they aren't even talking to their family members after the election, dude. Isn't There's, that crazy? Our, yeah, our country is so polarized right now that family members are uh, unfriending each other on Facebook and all this other stuff. Um, well, Thanksgiving's coming up, and all these people are going to be under the same roof, buddy. There's going to be... Dude, there are going to be... I mean, holidays were already prone for, for family discord, right? Like, you were already... Yeah. Brawl, and now you enter this? Woo! Dude, I've got some cousins. They're all attorneys and doctors and stuff, and great guys. But you know, they're they're left leaning. And every family reunion, man, it was just a, a huge argument all the time. With, I mean, their dad was a hardcore conservative. Those guys, younger, you know, liberal. Um, just you know, arguments between them alone was bad at the family reunions. But um, there's going to be a lot of people. I mean, they're going to be throwing turkey and shit at each other. <laughs> You know, Dude, that's gonna be a treasure trove of Facebook living. People are gonna be recording just like serious Jerry Springer unhinging shit going on in their household. Oh, no, you know what? Yeah, you know what would be great. Uh, luckily, pretty much everybody in my family uh, they're conservative. I mean, so so I'm good to go. And everybody that's coming over to my house, friends and family, are all conservatives. Uh, so we, we're not gonna have any problems here. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, if I had some liberal family members. Or friends that were coming over, I would make a big banner um, oh, in one of the rooms geez. or over a door that would say "Safe Space." Oh it. no! So that they, so, so that they could go zone. there. I, I suggest, <laughs> I, I strongly recommend this to all those conservatives out there that have liberal family members to, to smooth things over with them and make them feel comfortable. Um, or even over your front door, you could put the banner. You know, this is a safe space and. And you know, ease the tension with with your liberal family members. That's insane. I have just seeing seeing this reaction. I don't get. I mean, I don't know, man. I just don't get it. I mean, I guess I I would not have been happy at all either way. When you whatever it's, it's 
Dude, it's if, being fueled by the real news sites. No, I know. I'm just saying, if, if Hillary would have won, I would have been salty. I would have been pretty salty. Not that I'm elated, Trump won. Not that I mean, it's not like I don't know. Yeah, it's I'm not, not going to go up. I, I'm not going to go out jumping on freaking cop cars and shit. Ex- right, right, right. But it's like it's at the end of the want. day, I just don't. People are so. Like I say all the time, people cannot have their their opinion. They they let their opinion have them over and over, and it just is like, man, I, I guess you know. It, they did this, you know. What someone posted some stuff of the effigies of Obama, people like hanging black figures, you know, not real, but just like after Obama won, setting it on fire, all pissed off, like he's not my president. Like, and eight years later, here the fuck we are. We're okay. Like, you know, can you imagine all the cats who who said, you know, after a nice thirty pack of whatever beer they drank, how they were gonna take them out? There's no way he's getting in. I'm getting them. Like, you know what I mean? Talk shit around oh, yeah. the campfire saying they're going to get him, and eight years later, nobody did yeah, shit. And, I mean, they, there wasn't and, even an attempt. And the, liberals, and the liberals were doing the same thing when Bush was elected and all that. And, you know, it's, 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 it's a revolving door. It's on both sides. I mean, I, don't, I, I would say, obviously, that, that on the liberal side, it's, it's obviously much, much worse. I mean, um, there's, there's buildings being lit on fire and looted and shit. And, you know, while conservatives can be complete morons, there's some real hillbillies in, in – that are that are conservatives and stuff like that do some stupid shit, say some stupid shit, but um, we have cry-ins now, dude, at colleges. Dude, they have, the whole, they yeah, have the service whole... dogs to come in for oh. kids, for college kids to pet. While, mind you, there's 18-year-olds in the Marines, 19-year-olds in the right. Marines, 20-year-olds right. in the Marines that are over in Afghanistan and Iraq right now, dude. And, and these college kids... And high school kids walking out of Berkeley high schools and all this other. It's, it's these, bizarre it's shit, pathetic. dude. And the teachers are supporting it, dude. The teachers are walking out with them. It's just a, a, a mess. Well, I mean, I, I mean, it's hard to extrapolate this conversation, but I kind of agree. It's like these are all the cats who – this is what you get when you when everyone gets a participation trophy. It's just like everyone wins. Nobody's been told no. It's like you're the best, Timmy. You're the best, Susie, at all fucking here's, time. Yeah, and here's the thing. If there's any liberals listening to this, I'm sure there's smoke rolling out of your ears by now, but here's the thing, and you can't deny it. This is the first real lesson in losing that these liberals are getting, and it's a brutal one. Especially after coming off, coming off Barry. You know, off coming off eight years of Barry, they thought they ruled the world. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they thought a done deal. I mean, a woman, a liberal, she's in, dude. Well, I mean, and that's the, I mean, I guess I, I mean, I guess people, I mean, I know I identify with those terms, but it's like there's shit I'm liberal on, there's shit I'm conservative on. I don't think anybody is necessarily one or the other, but I think the the label is almost irrelevant. I think it's yeah, I mean, about people's I mean, emotional goodness, you're, state, you're, people's you're, inability you're, to keep it the fuck together, regardless of shit not going their way, regardless of your political ideology. Canceling fucking school in our university to bring in PTSD. People, because because of the election results, that's oh, fucking hilarious. bizarro world, dude. That's bizarro yeah, world. It's, that is, it's I don't. Hilarious. That's not conservative or. I mean, whatever. That's just fucking. I guess it is liberal. Those are the cats doing it. But I mean, that's insane, man. That's some mental right. illness shit. Yeah, yeah. So. Oh, Thanksgiving though, it's gonna be interesting, this. ladies and gentlemen. I'm, pay attention to your Facebook. Because you know you can't stand your family most times after you know the first drink or two kicks in. You're like, I'm over this shit. Well, you know, Tune the one good Facebook. thing is, you know, as mad as the liberals are, it's not like most of them are going to be bringing guns to Thanksgiving, right? <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you never know. You never know. So, you know, yeah, we've 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 scorched through some serious material. I think this has been a great show. Um, next week, dude, because we didn't get to it. I've got to discuss um, some pretty cool stuff um, that was fed to me from England on the government and some folks sending out letters to churches over there warning of imminent terrorist attacks. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, you mentioned that. God, that would God be good. For, yeah. God forbid any of these terrorist attacks happen. But, dude, the, the letter, the newsletter to these to these churches is shocking. If if And you, you had talked about some... some uh, Organization, an organization here in the United States that kind of does the same thing, but you know the, 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 the way clerk, that they, clergy the way that they're being team, told, yeah. the way that they're being told to prepare and how to act if it happens is completely different than the way Americans would be told, right? It's because these people don't own weapons. They just it's 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 nuts, dudes. It's like make sure that you have 
um, everything in order um, so that the police can have a much easier time investigating the aftermath of this crime. Yeah, see here, like you said, the equivalent here is I think it's called the clergy response team or something like that, and it's the complete opposite. It's like if something goes down, call call Homeland Security of the government because that they're going to save you, basically. It has nothing well, to do if, with really self-sufficiency. What if, what, if, what if everybody's dead in the church and they can't make a phone call? Yeah, I mean, that's what, dude, people are going to fucking wind up to find out the hard way, man, that there's, you know, self-sufficiency, you know, that's the key to survival in almost any situation, not some dire situation. If you can't take care of yourself, man, as we're seeing with these millennials losing their shit over yeah. the results of an election, like, you know, we're... We, we need to we need to start separating the wheat from the chaff, and it is happening, man. I mean, these folks, God forbid, some shit really goes down and shit really gets tough. I mean, we know who the first to go will be. <laughs> we sure as hell do. We know who the zombies will be eating first. A whole shitload of millennials, dude. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> they are fucking so weak. It's incredible. Well, it's it's, it's terrible, dude. It's terrible. My you, um, my dude. Huh? Twelve-year-old and fourteen-year-old daughters are tougher than these people. And congrats to uh, I forget which I forget her name who uh, won the uh, won the swimming swimming meet the other or, you know the I little tourney. Yeah, she's a little killer. My twelve-year-old, she's a little she's awesome. A little killer. She's, she's impressive. Just training. She's swimming champion. faster than a lot of high school kids, man. That's awesome. Seventh grade. Good for you, brother. Well, I mean, you know, this is um, yeah, you, you know, it makes sense, right? It's in the blood. Just training champions, I, brother. I guess, I guess. Either, <laughs> either win or you're not getting dinner. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's a, that's a serious incentive to win, my friend. Yeah, no doubt. Well, check it out, brother, man. This has uh, been an awesome series of shows, man, coming up this holiday season. I wish nothing but the best to you and yours. Have an amazing, happy Thanksgiving. Get your grub on and uh, do as you always do, man. Enjoy your fam and enjoy your enjoy your space.